are some dark virtues where things which uh, we normally think of as vices they have another side of the coin if only they're put in the proper perspective take like what we said before fear fear can be extremely motivating if you can really close your eyes and imagine with a concrete imagination knowing the details of your life knowing how horribly things can go for you and everything that you have can be hanging by a thread if only few things are taken away it's really that fragile and then how will your inner well-being be if you go bankrupt for instance imagine the worst to the best of your ability what could be the worst possible case scenario and then strive to avoid that that's a very empowering and motivating fear isn't it do you want to live the next 20 30 50 80 well i don't know 80 years 50 60 years of life with chronic everyday stress your normal neurosis and paranoia the fear of always suffering which is like a ghost haunting your mind day in and day out and therefore you're not interested in a pursuit of, a pursuit of truth you're interested in a pursuit of pleasure so you live life in this sense never knowing fully the real beauty of life which can only be known with a consciousness that's totally immersed in the present moment and that's not corrupted by past knowledge is this how you want to live your life this these are the questions that you need to ask spiritually spiritual concerns which are not so much motivated by is there a heaven or hell is there a god am i going to be reincarnated in a more favorable birth in the future or am i going to enter into my private little hell but really being fine you know life most people as most people do in a way that's mundane that's earthly and these are things which everyone can relate to so let's use the same language if these are the things that are often driving you still you need to set your priorities how do i want to live the rest of my life if this doesn't create a deep sense of urgency in you to go deeper and deeper into the life of self-knowledge then i question your intelligence i question frankly how noble is your humanity these are who teaches you this parents the university or in the school or in the workplace everybody has their own agenda and part of their agenda is you are some pawn that's a means to meet their agenda too much self-knowledge in the society breeds too much independence and too much independence among common people is very threatening to the the hierarchy the hierarchy we've created right then you can't get people to vote for your specific political party you can't people get people to be convinced by the so-called freedom of capitalism we purchase products to fulfill your to cover up what deficiencies are you are told to have get my meaning it's kind of like the dilemma that the church the christian church does to some people they say such and such is a sin and therefore you must leave yourself by going to a priest the priest will tell you go oh, do 100 hail marys so on one hand they create the sickness and make you convinced about the sickness and then they give you the cure for the sickness you see that like it's, it's absurd priests were doing that for and still do it it's a century old tradition and uh, our society is doing it hypnotizing people on mass level 
So of course, too much independence will be threatening. And if you come across an individual who has preserved his independence, uh, he will be interpreted by many people as a very dangerous force. Part of preserving your independence has to do with really prioritizing your life. And fear, the dark virtue of fear, can be a great motivator. We've talked before about Hakuin, right? And Hakuin, the great motivator for him to become a monk was he was hearing from childhood stories about hell and reading the sutras. And you can judge this on the surface and say, oh, that's so stupid, that's so immature, why was he so consumed by that? But just think of somebody who doesn't know better. You have to live within the limits of what you know, especially from a young, being at a young age. So he believed this as a reality. Perhaps there is going to be a hell that's in store for me for the future. And if you treat that as a reality, oh, it can be, it can create a drive and a passion within you that's unlike any other. So you hear all this talk about fear being a huge hindrance to human well-being. It's like a cancer and a poison that's following you in your everyday life. You need to do away with it. But learn to love your fear. Learn to see how your fear can be a guru. That it can actually take you to places which improve the human potential, which bring it to greater heights. The example of Gautama Buddha, right? Lived the life of a prince, had everything of the kingdom that was easily there to his disposal. His father made an extra effort and frankly he was just trying to be a good father. He was just trying to be a good father. As a so-called good father, what do some do? They try to protect the child. They try to protect him from handling concepts which you're not yet mature enough to digest. Right? The father tried to protect him from anything that had to do with either questioning the deeper value of life or the deeper meaning to life or that there's any other fate for him, for Gothma, besides taking over the kingdom. Think when you're like, for example, a child, if he asks mommy, what happens to the body after we die? If you say your body is going to be gone forever, that might be too hard to swallow. It could traumatize the child, right? He was just trying to be a good father, shelter him from sickness, from seeing the realities of old age and death. But nevertheless, that did not clear up the vacuum that existed in his heart. So much to the point where out of this was out of fear, wasn't it? to leave the palace kingdom and live the life of a wandering ascetic. Every person who becomes passionate about truth is motivated by fear. Fear of mortality, right? Your time is short in this life. So therefore, these questions start to become meaningful. What's the meaning to life? In this short span of 50 to 80 years, and knowing the unimaginable number of lives that have come before me, what can I know in this life which can give me a sense of real meaning? Isn't that something that's been occupying the mind of philosophers for centuries? Would those questions even exist if it wasn't motivated by fear? Right? And that fear opened doors of knowledge. It opened doors of exploration where you no longer take things for granted, you have an infinite series of tomorrow and tomorrow, and therefore you become totally insensitive to life around you and insensitive to yourself, right? You start to become sensitive. You start to become careful of every breath, every step, every word, every action. Where is all of this leading? And if I die, do I want to die in a state of panic? Or do I want to die as a he- as my as a personal hero, a hero who's lived life very deeply immersed, 
not being wasteful with the time and or I can truly say I lived my life out of a greater sense of freedom and happiness and joy these are the priorities we must set clear in the mind or on the spiritual path much more important questions than is there a God is there no God and that's your motivation for looking for the life of self-knowledge which is very ego motivating especially if you believe in a God who is going to give you everything that you want in heaven or especially if uh, you have the greed for reward for all of your good merit and karma that's avoiding looking just at the, the harsh realities of life which are founded on impermanence which are founded on mortality right so tell me how valuable is your fear it has two sides of the coin it can be a virtue or it can be a vice it all depends on where is your fear pointed if your fear gets you to question the value of your life it's very empowering you've turned your fear into a type of guru so what do you think take the time and question what are you really seeking you know you've been seeking something for a very long time without knowing what you're seeking but it's been there in the background it's like you're programmed to seek your freedom and people are completely blind to that that in your innermost core of Buddha nature there is pure freedom and all of the calamities of life are just because you're not conscious of that reality. And then don't think it's just an individual matter. That's my Buddha nature. You see the same Buddha nature in a tree, a worm, a flower, an animal, a human being, a dog, a cat, the sun, the stars, the moon, the mountains. Then can you think of a substitute which will bring you a greater feeling of being connected to the beauty of life? You can't. Everything has a common soil. Learn to discover your common soil. And that soil is shared by your own being and it's the same soil of the whole universe. We're all being nourished by it. It's the most valuable treasure. And you want to waste your life not having a taste of that? I implore you, don't waste, don't waste the time.